Now, welcome to the Landsuper architecture overview. This is where we're going to go over what makes Landsuper Landsuper, which components Landsuper consists of, and where they're located. Uh, to start off, we're going to take a look at the Landsuper Classic architecture. So, Landsuper Classic has three main components it has the scanning server, database, and the local on premise web console. Now, the scanning service goes out, fetches all the data that you're scanning with all the different scanning targets that you have, takes that information, puts it in the database, and then the web console simply reads out information from the database. Now, if you're currently new to Landsuper and you've started your Landsuper trial, or if you've recently installed Landsuper, you'll find that you're not using a on-premise web console. Now we're using a cloud-hosted web console that also has a cloud-hosted database component to it. The scanning service, however, is still something that is installed locally with a small database there for data retention and to make sure that you know, we can still sync things. And in case any connection issues happen, that we have a way of having a backup of the data that you scanned in the meantime. So that is just the basic concept of what makes Landsuper Landsuper. If we look at what you can do beyond that, there's many more options to increase scalability, make sure that you're not stuck or you're not bottlenecked by anything. And that's where we get to multiple scanning services. As I mentioned, the scanning service is a component that actually goes out and fetches the data. Now, if you're using one scanning service to scan, let's say, 20,000 devices, it can happen that it takes either a very long time to go through all of those different devices, or that simply you scan so many devices that there's not enough time in a single day to actually scan all of them. It can happen. In that case, and just also to do a better job of load balancing, is where we allow people to, scan, to actually install multiple scanning services to spread the load of the scanning targets that you have. Now, the architecture itself doesn't really change that much in these cases. All you're doing is you're adding additional scanning servers that still sync back and send the data back to the same database as the original scanning service that you've installed. Just like the previous example, if you're using the cloud-hosted version of Landsuper, um, the scanning service will still sync the data with the cloud database, and obviously your cloud interface will pull data from that cloud-hosted uh, database as well. Up next, we're going to talk about how the actual components or where the actual components are installed. Uh, up till now, you could assume that all of these components that I mentioned are installed, or the ones that need to be installed, are installed on a single machine, which is possible. But for the larger environments, additionally, to do better load balancing, you can actually install each component on a specific device or a separate device. This is not only useful for actually load balancing, but also sometimes needed to scan uh, different offices that you have scattered around the world. One example could be that you have an office in the US, you've got one in Europe, and maybe one somewhere in Asia. Um, if you have just a single LAN super installation in that case, you have your database somewhere central. Let's say you have your database in Europe uh, with a scanning service for the office there. But to also scan the North American office and the Asian office, you deploy a scanning service both in that local network and in the local network of Asia as well so that you're able to gather all the information and store it in the one central database. Now, you can have as many scanning servers as you want. You can deploy them wherever you want, as long as they're able to connect back to your central database. It's not really an issue uh, for the on-premise, the Landsuper Classic uh, web console. You do only have one, so it's, again, a choice of where you're going to put that. The last architecture overview that we're going to take a look at is one with multiple installations. Now, multiple installations can be done for multiple reasons. Uh, either it be kind of load balancing again, or whether it is to keep your data very separate. Uh, some enterprises, you can imagine, you know, the North American office is not allowed to see or touch any of the data that is coming from Europe and vice versa, and same thing with Asian office. Uh, those kind of things regularly happen. So that's where customers choose for multiple installations. Um, or maybe you're an MSP that is managing multiple customers where you just simply have multiple customers that each have their own LAN super installation. In this case, you can either have multiple people, departments in your organization manage the different LAN super installations, or you can make use of the cloud-hosted version of LAN super 
where you're able to connect all of those different installations to one single site. So it means that all the data is federated in one cloud hosted database and you can view all of the federated data in one single interface as well. Now obviously for MSPs, this is an obvious choice because you're managing multiple customers. Uh, you want to be able to view all of the data maybe in one overview or you're able to just log into the site of a customer where your member of your one user profile is a member of multiple customer Landsweeper sites and you can jump in between them however you like, whenever you need to. Lastly, I wanna cover something uh, also important, which is what impacts the choice of your architecture? When should you have all of your components on one machine? When should you spread them out? Uh, when do I need multiple and super uh, local installations? When do I just need one? Unfortunately, there's not really one precise or, or an exact answer that I can give because as many of those things, it just kind of depends on what your environment looks like. Uh, generally speaking, if you're just a smaller company that doesn't have uh, multiple thousands of devices, you're usually good to go with just doing a basic install that has Landsweeper on one machine, all of the components on one machine, and you can link it to the cloud component where you're able to use all the new features as well. Now, if you're a bit of a larger organization, maybe an organization that has multiple offices, that's where you come into the area of where you have multiple scanning service. Um, so you're able to go and fetch the data from some of your sites that are in different geographical locations. Um, when you get to the next, next level, where you really have big organizations that are spread across the world, that's maybe where you want to look at the multiple land super installations and then combining them together to have that one single overview that you need of your global IT infrastructure. So with that, we've covered everything there is on the Landsweeper architecture overview. Head over to the next video to learn more.